guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are gonna do a collab with the famous Kimchi Chan. If you guys already know her, she's doing so many like videos about research and master's scholarship and life in Japan too. So today we are gonna be talking about the research area that everyone asked me about. So hello. Hi there. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm Loretta and uh, I don't know, should we just get into it? Yes. <laughs> questions in here that actually some of you have been asking so the first one I just want you to present yourself where are you from and when did you went to Japan okay all in Japanese right no, no. <laughs> no. no. okay um, so my name is Loretta I'm from the United States I am I applied through New York City Embassy so I guess I'm kind of from New York in that sense and um, when, what else uh, I went to I did the next research level scholarship for a business degree and then stayed until now. Years <laughs> have you been in Japan already? Okay, so now it's been about four years on this scholarship. I did study abroad and all that jazz before, but for MEXT, I graduated last year in 2019 and it's been one year since then. So I've been here four years total because of MEXT. Wow, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not as much as you though, you're, you're a veteran. Yeah, I, yeah. I, Five years. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with some of the questions. So yeah. you can work after finishing your scholarship or not? Yeah, so you can do both. Some people I know really maxed out the scholarship because when you're a research student, your first year is like auditing, you get no grades, you do you don't even have to do Japanese school, so you can just kind of get used to the school and try classes. You can extend that for two years, then you can do your actual program for two years, and then if you want, you can continue extending. Wow, that's actually good. You can do like long school road or you can also basically just graduate and then uh, start working. It, there's two options actually because as research student you can stay just as audit student and graduate that way and then you can also as an actual full you know degree student you can graduate and then do your job search. Um, a lot of people I know who did the MEX scholarship, they basically, if they wanted to work, they had to start getting ready really quickly, then the year before you graduate. I don't know, in Japan that's normal, but like, as coming from the States, you don't think about applying for a job a year before you graduate. Um, so if you do want to do the whole like job track, you have to basically start applying the year before when you start, you know, the actual course. So. It's like as soon as you actually start the course, you have to start applying for a job. For example, if you don't have like the grades or you don't have like the attendance and all of these requirements to extend the scholarship, but you still want to study in Japan, can you study with another scholarship? Can you try to apply to another scholarship? By next, I think it's okay as long as you finish their scholarship. Like as long as you complete the entire program, you can basically stay in Japan and do whatever is next <laughs> after next um, but for other yeah, next after next but for for other schools I found that their scholarships may be very specific that you can't apply if you already have a scholarship or you can't like you know you have to check that school's rules or that school scholarship first but generally um, it's you know as long as you graduate like your attendance in your grades may be shaky, but as long as you actually finish your program and don't quit halfway through, you should be able to stay and, you know, thrive. So in your case, did you finish and start working? Or Yeah, so what I did basically was while I was doing my research, I started doing part-time jobs at different companies that I actually wanted to work at. So it was almost like an internship informally that I kind of did. Um, and that was like the easiest thing for me. These companies, they were my part-time jobs, but they also were my research case studies. Like I asked them all to do interviews to do my for my research paper. And then when I graduated, I could have just picked one to sponsor my visa, but I'm complicated. And I used all of them to build some crazy, like crazy visa with all of them. Uh, oh, that's actually nice. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it, it was like some, I did like a freelancer thing where I just took all of them and made them into one thing. But um, you can just basically 
start working immediately. The only, another thing that's a possibility is that once you graduate, if you don't know where you're going to work, you can switch to like a searching for job visa. And that's different because it's still sponsored by your school, your actual host school, and they'll have all this paperwork for it. Um, but it's giving you a permission to stay while you're looking for a job. And that's different than tourist visa, you know, like just staying on tourist visa doesn't really work because it's hard enough, then it's harder to get a job. But there is like a job searching visa that you can get with your same school if you're not done. Oh, so you guys can stay in Japan more years. All of you yeah. that were wondering like if you have to come back to your country or not, there's so many options. The same as my scholarship, her scholarship, yeah. the research also has the same options. You then it. someone asked me, like they were they are already in the research program in their home country. But they're wanting to like stop that research and go to Japan and start again. So um, they are wondering like in the section of the grades. Which one do they have to grade? If it's like the undergraduate grades or the research grades? So for all, almost, I want to say almost every school in Japan, um, no matter what school you are in, finished, or in the middle of, you have to disclose all information, all grades, all schools, you have to put it all there. So even if you're like in the middle of a current research, you still have to say, I'm at this school and this is what I'm doing currently because you they just have to see that. It looks like fraud if you don't tell them everything. So you have to tell them. <laughs> um, for this person specifically, Mext is definitely like my favorite scholarship, if that's a thing. <laughs> um, but for that, for that type of person specifically, if you're already a researcher or if you already have a host school, there are other programs that you can do, other scholarships that allow you to do like research fellowships like in Asia, in Japan. There's like, I did a video talking about like different scholarships, but they may also want to just look into using their host school to spring into Japan for like a year or two. But there's definitely, if you're already in a research program, you can do fellowships abroad while you're there and there are scholarships for that too so don't forget to check that there's a lot of money uh, like for people who are trying to be professors people who are trying to do like uh, any subject basically if you're already at a professional level there's so much money there so get it <laughs> <laughs> then there is another one to say how long the study plan be this person told me that they already have like two pages or three pages of the plan of study so how long do you recommend that plan of study be or which points do you recommend should be yeah. applying study? So I would say you can like ideally one page looks nice. You can do like two or three pages, but regardless of the length, I think what's more important is that you stick to this thing that's called a uh, wakugumi in Japanese, like the framework the skeleton, that's just the word for like framework, but it it's basically, there's a certain way that Japanese people are used to research and they're used to how it looks. And basically there are certain topics that every research paper, every abstract and every like proposal has. So the first one is always the haike, kenki no haike or mondai ishiki, which is like the problem statement. What is the background behind your research? Like what problem makes your research relevant? The next one is Senko Kenkyu, which means your like literary review, their previous articles. What are people already saying about this topic? And then how do you know that your article is like next on top of that? And then the third thing after that should be like Kenkyu Taisho or something like that, where you talk about what is the actual like, what are you actually going to be studying within that field? And then after that, you have um, Kenkyu Hoho or like you know, basically, how are you going to actually do the methodology? So like, are you doing a case study? Is it just uh, looking at different research, doing a review? Is it literary review? What style is it? You just describe the format of your research. Is it interview style, etc. Um, after that, then Kenki no Kekka, you have to actually announce what is the result of your study. And then Bunseki and Kousatsu, which is like analysis and, uh, you know, the 
your analysis and your thoughts about the implications of like why is it important in your field and then like musubi at the end is just like closing statements um i have found that in the states in america you have to do a lot of theory about like why your theory is like revolutionary and like how you're like changing the world and like in japan it's not like that they don't even necessarily like case studies are kind of rare in japan i found they really kind of almost expect you to do literary reviews where you just you have to know what came before you summarize it and then find out where you where your research fits so there's a lot of research you have to do saying i know and you basically you have to show that you're building off of past research and you're not repeating it so if you walk in with a research proposal saying here's my crazy research and it's already been done before eh, like that doesn't look good because it looks like you don't know like it's it's not important it's not worth ten thousand dollars to have you do something again um but that being said if you're saying i'm doing it for the first time in japan or like i'm doing my research research for the first time comparing my home country and Japan or like something like that. You basically start with a huge theory that Japan knows and is currently relevant and then fit it into these categories when you write your proposal. Um, quick note for resu results, you're not going to have any results so you can't write that in your proposal, but you can say I expect this type of result or I expect this type of thing. Um, and then talk more about basically what research is there already, how you fit, and how you hope this paper will make an impact in the field and then try to fit it in that like wakugumi that skeleton so you can do bullet point that way with like paragraph under each section or you can do two three pages but you have to have at least i would say three previous researches and make sure you actually cite them know what you're talking about and show that you're actually doing research and not just like ideas um so yeah so that's, that's what about like for example when i did my thesis for university i took like a completely new topic like a yep. sh like new 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 there was no like yep. research before would that even work too in this case to do the planning study yeah so that's basically what happened to me i started with something about um like rakuten has this whole englishization movement that they started and then everything kind of got weird with the olympics where everyone was dealing with english but there's no real literature on it yet so i had a lot of trouble trying to find past articles um so what i did was basically i found a theory in the states that's really popular right now in the business world about how to break into new markets or how to break into new things like that and i basically tried to frame it within an existing theory that way even though it wasn't my exact research so I basically said this is a lens, like we're looking at this through a lens of this one theory. And then you have to basically at that point do like a case study or an interview. Because if it's brand new, it's probably because you're getting the data. So you're probably doing case study or interviews. And at that point, you still need pr previous research or you need to show in previous research that it doesn't, you know, that it doesn't exist. That's totally valid. That actually makes your research look even better. If you're saying this doesn't exist, so I'm doing it. Um, but you have to know it doesn't exist. And then you have to find something you can relate it to. It still has to be relevant. <laughs> um, and then do like a case study or some, sign some kind of interview. And one tip, don't focus on trying to make some huge conclusion. You don't need to say like, and now I've saved the world from you know from architecture flaws across borders or like i've saved the world from like business flaws from new york like like you know you don't need to be a superwoman you don't need to be superman they care do you know your your background field and do you know how to do research so at the very end you could say i've seen research papers that say and the implications are good because it's never been done before and what we learned is see above like ijo this like and like that's it like you don't need to write some huge conclusion so um you know america's like big thesis statement you don't need to test a thesis as like scientific inquiry per se you just need to show that you know where you fit in the research field okay that actually is a good tip because so many people have been asking about this but i didn't have to write one so i was like it's difficult for me to answer that question so thank you for answering and I Sorry think you so <laughs> No, it's actually good. You gave so many good tips. I think like it's gonna help so many of you guys. And they said like for example, in my case when I was talking about the like 
the specialized i know that so many of you guys watch my video about the specialized and you guys ask me about the japanese like if you should know japanese or no like before going and like i don't know what do you think about it i think so the difference between research and i don't know undergraduate but the difference between research and at least specialized training is that you can pick your school and you have the choice of like three options and if you pick a school where your program is japanese and you don't speak japanese you're not going to get in if your program is english and you speak japanese that's nice you know it's extra but like if you need Japanese, depends on what school you're going to, because no matter what, like the application says, the rule is you have to want to learn Japanese. You need to show initiative because they will teach you. There will be courses available if you want to take them. Um, but it's basically if your program is all in Japanese and you don't speak Japanese, you're not going to get it because you're not going to get it when you're there. So it's going to be, you know, a waste of money. But it always helps to learn, um, you know, as much as you can up until the test. There is a Japanese test on the application. It's just an assessment, but they are looking and, you know, it only helps if you learn as much Japanese as possible. And like Beto said, when we did a video on my channel, you know, if you just learn hiragana, that'll take you so much farther than not. Like just, just put in, just do something. <laughs> like at the very least, no hiragana and then go from there. Um, one quick tip, this is not in the actual like guidelines. If you show like a generally good Japanese ability in your written test, there's an interview afterwards and they will, interview you in Japanese like it's going to happen it's not written in the guideline but it's going to happen and so that's actually good to know like so be prepared what if you just, just try to make it out of nowhere and then you get everything okay yeah like just you know that like you know don't hide your Japanese ability you should definitely show that you do but just if you speak Japanese at all expect to use some of it and even if you're not comfortable with Japanese just say like uh you know, like, like, I can only go so far, like, like, you know, like, you can even change it back to English, but expect Japanese to happen and uh, know how to at least describe your topic a little bit in Japanese. Oh, that's or, like, so good. Yeah, like, just no, no, right? Like, even, even a name for, like, just the field or, like, just, any, like, anything, just know a little bit. <laughs> At least to, know, to say your name. At least know your research title in Japanese. The next one is like, one person said like how to specify the field of study. Like, okay. when they make you write that in the application form, but so many people doesn't know how specific they have to write it. Like if for example, they just have to put business, is that already good to specify or no? They have to be more, more, more specific. Uh, I think you don't have to be too too specific. If you do know the field of what it's called at your school, that's a good thing to put it in so it like makes sense. Um, but the the fields of study in Japanese are different than in English, so like it kind of depends on if you do it in Japanese or not as well. Um, but if you say like business with a specialty and blah blah blah, like that may be helpful or like whatever specializing in this that may be helpful. The only thing I can say definitely as a tip is that whatever you write as your field of study on your application does not have to be what you do in the end. So a lot of people actually change their research once they get there or once they realize there's something better they could do or you know when you actually sit down with your advisor and they talk to you about their knowledge and like their resources, you may shift every like almost everyone I know shifted their research. Some people even shifted their advisor and had like started almost fresh. The only thing you really can't change is the school. So well, you can actually, you can change schools and you can change majors actually. Um, but you know, it's better if you kind of stay a little bit general because you can like shift your You can play around. Yeah, you can like kind of tweak it a little bit. So it doesn't have to be exact, um, but yeah. And just expect to change it a little bit. Don't expect that what you write on that day is exactly what you're going to graduate and turn in. Like, it's probably going to change. So, you know, just kind of keep it close to what your your prospective schools are offering. And, uh, you know, I don't and know. And good luck. 
and good luck. <laughs> yeah, I, I would go a step beyond just business or like just economics. Like I, you know, I would like add in one more layer. And then um, when you do the actual, like if there's a space for a paragraph, then you can give more information. But basically like it should look like a major that's already existing in Japan where you're trying to land is what I would say. Okay, and now that you are talking about like all the advisors and all of these, this kind of a scholarship, can you apply like directly to the school or can you apply like for example the specialized training that we just applied through the embassy? So you have to do a little bit of research because the, the there's the two ways while you're in Japan where you pay for like a semester and you go in and then add scholarship or you can do what I did where you actually apply through the embassy like, like you mentioned. Um, the difference is that because you're able to pick your schools, you have to do research into what schools are actually available, what have your major. Yeah, because you, al you also have to pick an advisor in addition to the school and the program. Like you have to pick an advisor who would kind of be your like your fellow, your, your mentor. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you do all of that research, there's, there's not, not a lot of information in the States about what you can do. There's not a lot of link, like a list or anything basically. Um, so what I did was like, I started with Wikipedia and just looked up national universities in Japan. And then I started looking, I just started in Kanto area because I like Yokohama, I've lived here before. I like, like Tokyo area. So I just started there and then Googled like, those, those names, names of schools and next to see make sure they have next then i checked their curriculum or i checked like i was linguistics at first so i did like linguistics gobaku thank you next and like googled that and things like that and like two professors came up so it was very easy that way um but yeah it like you know you have to search and actually find the school and that that's kind of the hardest part really yeah i get that question a lot too if you see yourself in the future sponsoring your own work visa and you want to get like the best one possible, you might want to consider looking at the absolute best top schools. Like everyone knows Tokyo University and some people know like other schools as well, but like Tokyo University is not pretty much not going to accept you unless you do science. Like they're STEM science, like they're very hard about science. And so otherwise, like just you have to find other schools and that's like a great starting point for schools that get you a good visa as well. Um, and now that you talk about schools, there is one more question that I just yeah. remember right now. Like people ask me like so many things, for example, in my case, in my scholarship, I don't choose the school. But yeah. since you guys can choose the school, like, can you choose for private university, for example, Keio University being if it's yeah. really expensive, can you choose that university or it has to be public? So that it depends on the school. They say national universities, but some private ones that, at least when I looked, they, they had mixed, but you have to check first. So like, um, Keio definitely has the mixed scholarship and at least for a research student, I'm not sure about undergraduate. Um, but, but like other schools, I looked at Sophia. Sophia is a very yeah. popular school. It, you're not going to get next through Sophia. Like that's just, they know that everyone kind of wants to go there. So that's like not really an option, but like there are certain schools that everybody knows. I feel like, like everybody knows like Sophia, Ritsumeikang, Waseda, you know, these types of schools, like just check. They all have a next section. And when you're checking them, here's another like tip of advice. Um, check their actual next page because schools like Tokyo University, they have kind of a different process than the actual MEX application procedure. And so when I was applying, I applied to Tokyo University and I sent them my documents per the MEX deadline. But Tokyo University said I was too late because I didn't do it by their deadline, which was earlier. Oh yeah, because and they request the GRE too, no? Or did you they may have. I didn't get that far. <laughs> yeah, they because um, I tried to, to search about it, like they graduating all of that, and they say that, for example, graduating, research, and all of that, they need the GRE already passed. Yeah, so, Tokyo University, they really are trying to like create their own kind of realm. So like you have to actually read the school website next portals as well, because some of them you can contact the professor directly. You have to contact the professor. Um, sometimes, you know, you can contact them directly and they'll say, yeah, I'll be your professor. Send me an email. But some of them like Tokyo University, you're not allowed to do that. Like, so some schools, they want you to go through a certain website through their like board of decide 
ding people and then they'll connect you to the professor. So like the schools sometimes have their own rules, which is questionable, but leave that for a different video, et cetera. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, just like, you know, read the actual MEX pages and that'll give you more information. Yeah. And now that you say about the professor, how do you like recommend people to approach the professors? Yeah. Okay. So definitely be professional, be uh, polite and be concise. Do not write like miles of text. And one of the things that I think can help actually is to first, there's like an international student, like there's usually an international student help email or something like that. I would actually email them first, ask them like, can you give me a list of all professors who do like next or can you connect me and I would start there because you don't want to go to the professor with all of your questions that's not what they're there for but when I actually emailed my professor I emailed them in English and in Japanese but really short and my Japanese may have been terrible but you know it showed that helps it just looks better that way mm -hmm. and I basically said hi or I was like dear so-and-so like I did the whole format with their department and etc etc and I said dear professor so-and-so my name is this I am a prospective next student applying this year and I am searching for this type of you know this type of professor can you advise as to whether or not this is the correct person to speak with or can you advise as to whether or not you know is this like the correct step to be taking thank you so much, goodbye, leave it brief. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe say like, this is the research that I'm doing, like your topic, but don't start with a question because they may not even be the right person. So just say like, I'm a prospective student. I'm currently applying for this year. This is my research. Are you the right person to talk to? Just start with there. Yeah. And then thank you so much for your time. Goodbye. Like if, if you've never written a letter to a professor or a job or like a professional situation, just Google like professional business email template or like professional application. It's, it's almost like a job application email, basically. Just like look at like that level of politeness. There is one that I get a lot and I don't know how to answer it. So I don't know if you can answer it. This question is like, is there any book that you recommend to do mm. any of the tests that you need to do to get the research? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the answer is no, there's no one like certification MEX book out there that I'm aware of. I would definitely say though, one thing that helped for me is to look at the entrance exam for the field at that school that I'm looking at and see if your school has published any type of book or if they have any kind of like like on Amazon, uh, like Amazon Japan even, I found my school, YNU, has like entrance exam books, but they also have like general business books that they've published. So I would start there because, you know, that's the most relevant thing that, you know, these are the people you're actually going to be applying to. So I wouldn't waste time looking for some book. I was going to say Harvard Business Review in Japanese, but honestly, it's, that'll waste your time. Like, do that when you have time. For now, I would just say, if anything, look for if your school published something. If not, no, no. no don't waste time with that. Yeah, it's the same with time. So, the next one is, yeah, what type of literature can you use? Like when um, you can use any kind of literature. You can use uh, books. You can use internet. You can use like you know, articles and stuff. You can even use, um, what was I going to say? You can even use literature that's not in Japanese. If your research is in Japanese, you can use like your original text in that language. You're just going to have a headache trying to translate it. And, you know, th this actually is kind of why I ended up doing the literature that I did. I only picked like certain theories that were translated already into Japanese so that I don't have to translate them yeah. or learn how to talk about them when I did my research proposal. There is other question that is like, for example, in the part of the remarks, will it be smart to actually write or add all the academic like awards that they have? Like, for example, in my case, I published a research paper already. Would that be oh, yeah. like definitely. smart to write all of that? Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Yeah, Past research is like required. You, you have, have to write, write that. that. It's, it's, it's not, not required, required. If you have it, it's required that you share that. that. And um, for anything else, if it's like, 
in a war that's relevant, I would put it on there. But if it's just a normal, not normal, but if it's just like, you know, I don't know, like grades, straight A grades award, you know, you can skip that. It's, yeah, they, they like expect, friendly of that. the class or something like that. Yeah, it's like, you know, top of the class, they expect that. So, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, they, yeah. It, past research, definitely, I would say, and anything relevant. There is another one that is kind of similar. Like, someone asked me, like, they want to write a resume. So they asked me, mm -hmm. like, would it be smart or good to, uh, like, even if it's not required to write a resume and just bring it with all the application form or no? I, I would maybe ask your embassy. That might be a good question for your embassy. But, I mean, my thought is that maybe it doesn't hurt. Like, you might as well put it in. But... I would ask the embassy first because it depends. Sometimes they get angry if you do too much because it looks like you don't follow directions, mm -hmm. and sometimes they like it. So I, I would I would ask. Yes, but would they require you guys to have like uh, I don't know like the TOEFL or the TOEIC? I know that you are from the United States, so you didn't have to do that. But yeah. like for example, I'm from Costa Rica. We don't speak English, so would it be like required for me to present that kind of test, the English test? I I think it depends on the country because there, there I've seen there are different requirements in every country. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of them ask. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe Japanese is like more relevant. Um, but I would definitely check for that because it's not impossible that that would happen. And I can say this um, about the actual school, not necessarily the scholarship. When I started research student as like audit, and then I actually started the degree program, when I did the actual entrance exam, there was an English test in the actual entrance exam. And I still had to take that, even though I'm a native English speaker. And it was ridiculous, because I don't know how to take English tests. I've never done this before. Um, and <laughs> it was like really, I don't know. The hardest part actually was they had an English prompt, and I had to translate that into Japanese. So like, I kind of did it. But I imagine if that's not your first language, if neither are your first language, it would just be like... Can you choose the city where you're gonna live? Can you choose the dormitory? Uh, you get three choices of school. And then once you pick your top three choices, they'll probably pick the top one unless you get rejected, and then it goes down the list. And then that city kind of depends you know, obviously on where the school is and their dorm, they'll give you like a suggested dorm. Um, the only thing I can say, like, it's basically you can pick whatever you want, but be aware, everybody wants to go to Tokyo. Everybody wants to go to like Keio and etc. So just be aware that like other schools, for example, like Sendai, things like it's near and you can come down to Tokyo on the weekend if you want, but like you don't have to pay to live there or it's less crowded or like Yokohama or even Nagoya is a huge school area I've seen right now. It sometimes pays to pick a different city than Tokyo because there's less people going there and that'll make your application do better. How did that visa work? For me, it was like we get the student visa for the long time that we're going to be doing the specialized but for us it's only three years so we know that so by the time that we enter in japan they are going to give us a visa of three years but what about research so the visa that i got was a five-year visa but the residence card was only two years and three months so i had to renew it after the first two years so it's a way to kind of like check in with you but the actual visa was still five years so that's kind of like a complicated thing. But the thing that I did notice was that my other classmates from different countries got shorter visas. And they were from like Russia and like other countries in Latin America. So I'm not sure if like there's a different treatment type of thing. But basically I got a really long, really nice easy visa. And it also extended past the graduation date so that even if I still needed to like figure out my work visa, I had time. Like, what is like one of the things that make people uh, not to get the scholarship? Um, I think honestly, this kind of goes into like advice that you've said on the video on my channel, and I'm sure you've said it before, in everything that you do, in your proposal, in your interviews, in everything that you do, make sure that you have an answer as to why does your application deserve the scholarship? Like I had the interview and I walked in and there's two Japanese people and one American guy in the middle 
And he literally goes, I'm going to cut right to the chase. Why do you think you deserve $30,000? Or whatever amount it was. And I was like, uh, and he's like, what about your research is worth that amount of money? I want to know. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, I was like, oh, gosh, I don't know. You know, um, <laughs> you know so the, when you're writing your application, when you're everything that you're figuring out, you have to know that it's not just money, it's not just a fun time in Japan, it's not just a cool thing to do. This is actually tax dollars and they expect you to make an impact in Japan a society and in your home society and in the world as gen in general. So, you know, even if it's just in your field, what you're doing has to be like research that is, you know, going to bring something new to the field, even if it's like a literary review type of research and you just review past research, you know, bring in your spin of I'm from my country and I'm also in Japan or like whatever it is, you know, uh, your application, you don't need to talk about how much you love Japan. We know you love Sakura. We know you love anime. We love, we know you love temples. Like we all do. Okay. That that's like bare minimum above that. Like you have to know exactly why does your research matter in Japan? And why does it matter that you do it? Why does it matter that you do it in Japan? And then once you can start to think of those answers, you'll do so much better. Um, and, you know, just think really hard about being smart and like writing an answer that actually sounds like it's worth it. Yeah. So that, yeah. that, that's what I would say. <laughs> so thank you so much for all this tips and all this information you gave us today yeah and I'll, I'll probably float around your comment section yeah in case people are asking for more I'll, yeah I'll but i leave you guys the link also of your channel down here and yeah. follow her she has so many videos you have so many videos that are too so many useful. videos <laughs> yeah you have so many videos that are so useful like not, not only for scholarships but also for live in japan so <laughs> guys go and check her channel like out if you haven't yet, like I'm pretty sure that maybe some of, of you already checked her channel before coming to my channel. Oh but, no, yeah. no. They probably some some of them may have come from uh, from our video with you. Yeah, so maybe. Yeah, so I'll I'll be I'll be in the comments ready to we can chitter chatter. <laughs> yeah, to write in there after watching the video. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for doing this collaboration with me. Yeah, and thank you for having me. This is really really uh, like it's a relief. To know that there are more people doing that. So. Yeah. And good luck for all of you that are trying to apply, not only for the specialized, but also for the research. And good luck. try to take all the advices that she said because she already got it. She's in Japan and she knows what she's talking about. So it worked out. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. And thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bored. Uh, mm? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even... <laughs>